Yeah, pitchforks are really good. I mean, if you... Honestly, if you wanted to make a video that's literally... The whole thing is about getting the early game off the ground, I think that you could... You could compact that into like half an hour, maybe. Um, and I, I might take a crack at that myself, um, if I feel like putting the effort into a huge amount of video editing, you know? Um, this is a little dangerous, but I'm going to do this. Uh, mainly because I want to... <laughs> oh man, this is even more dangerous. Asimov's armor's messed up. Oh, the DLCs make the... I wouldn't play the game without the DLCs, basically. Um, I do think that it's overpriced, unfortunately. Like, they don't offer, like, a particularly good deal for all of the DLCs and the game. Um, but with that said, I, I think it's 100% worth it. I have to take this risk if I want to kill the Necromancer, and I do, because I really want that hat. So we're going to do this. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? He's only going to get one attack. And my helmet's totally fine, so it's not like a headshot's going to own me. Oh, he shoves me. <laughs> uh, yeah, their AI really wants to shove. It's like the bodyguard AI. But yeah, it is interesting to me that uh, the, the, the necromancer can be made to flee because you killed too many of his zombies. He's just like having none of it, you know? So this is a viable strategy, just kind of kill zombies until he runs away. I could have gotten some of this armor here from these zombies. That's okay. Opted not to do that. Go for the puncture, didn't work. The DLCs are carried by the base game? Well, I mean, yeah, you couldn't really... Yeah, no, in a vacuum they are bad value, but I, I'm just saying, like, they, they augment... I mean, you could certainly play the base game, but after, especially after being spoiled by the DLCs, I don't know why you would want to, because the the amount of content um, that they give really, really makes the game more worth playing, if you ask me. I mean, imagine the game without all the beasts in it, you know? Like, that alone would be kind of frustrating. Some maniac storming and kill 20 plus zombies with the respawns. What else should he do but run? No, he's making a smart decision. The only dumb thing he did was uh, he waited too long and now I'm surrounding him trying to take his uh, very stylish gothic clothes. I'm basically bullying a mall goth here is what's happening. Oh, lame. Apparently I cut his hat up too much. Super lame. Got two signet rings out of this and some wine, so that's okay. Um, the ideal mission to take on day one, in my opinion, has got to be the follow the tracks mission because that is almost guaranteed to only give you thugs. Um, seven thugs will go down to just about any starter party if you hire some dudes and get to work, you know. But as, uh, as Niche says, that is... Uh, kind of a luxury and you may not always have it. Um, some starts don't want to fight at all. For example, if you're playing traitors, you could you could straight up avoid all combat entirely on the traitors start and just do a bunch of trading and make a fortune that way, you know, um, and then play, play very defensively until you have like, you just buy your way into armor, you know. That's probably not what you want to do though on most other starts. Okay. Well, you don't. <laughs> um, you could take three-way fights and pick off a few people here and there. Um, I'm only talking about traders, really. Um, just to get, like... If I was going to play the traders start again, I would, I would do a bunch of trading first to get metal armor and only take the easiest missions, really, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to farm armor at that point since I could just be buying it. Wait till your armor can carry you. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm getting at for sure. Boy, this guy's resolve is terrible. Um, to the extent that I almost want to take plus twos on it, um, 
what are we looking at? We, if we wanted to get that to 50, <laughs> uh, what would we need to get? Uh, we would need to get 34. 34 resolve. So, uh, with 10 levels, Trader is a bad origin to learn the game because they have very different objectives. I would agree with that. Um, honestly, I think the best origin to learn the game with really is the tutorial. Resolve has a lot of good ways to patch it now. That's true. Um, we can send his ass into the arena. I don't know of any other ways. I guess you could hand him Lionheart potions all the time. Too bad we can't turn him into a cultist and get those Davkul traits since we're not uh, not playing as Davkul origin. Craftable stuff? Is there a craftable thing that increases resolve? Or are you talking about the potion? Yeah, Northern Raiders is good, although it's slightly different. Um, Northern Raiders... Actually, you know what? I've changed my mind. Northern Raiders is the best one for newbies to learn, as long as they can um, avoid getting, you know, murderized by, uh, by full armies of, you know, soldiers on day one. Because uh, it lets you bypass the dagger... You know, the daggering people down for armor thing. Uh, yeah, the accessories, good point. Avoiding all the cities. Yeah, like I said, like that's that's the hurdle. But if you can overcome that, I think I think like bypassing the the sort of armor gathering mini game is is pretty pretty good. Um, a lot of learning a game like this is I think limiting yourself from from some of the more annoying parts and then learning the other parts of the game sort of piecemeal. And I think the origins are kind of fun insofar as they allow you to do that um, to to varying degrees. Man, what do I want to do with this? Um, uh, yeah, you can get the Davkal armor. I think you need six, not five, but it could be five. I haven't checked the event in a while. And it has to be after day 200 as well. And at least two of them do have to be level 11, so you're, you're basically both, right? This is a very difficult level up, um, this this decision. He, he definitely wants more fatigue. He definitely wants more HP, but that's not on the table. Um, he wants more resolve, is the thing. God, 16 resolve. I've never seen somebody with such low resolve. Um, fat? What now? Yeah, he's gluttonous. He's not fat. You would think those would go hand in hand. Oh, you're saying fatigue. <laughs> yeah, I think I agree that fatigue. This is a max roll, so... And the resolve is a min roll. His res can't be saved. Uh, I mean, it can be made less shitty. But, I mean, sure. He's definitely going to take gifted and take a max roll on that. Okay, level up our bannerman. Melee attack. Resolve. Uh, you know, we're actually going to take the max roll fatigue here. Fatigue is so crucial for a bannerman. It's not even funny. Because you just need to be able to rally multiple times. Um, and in fact, just so I don't get into an unfortunate situation where I can't fight geists, I think I'll go ahead. I mean, especially because we have a deserter who could just start being a gigantic pussy at any moment. Uh, we'll go ahead and take Rally. A little bit early, but I will take it. Probably give him Recovery as well, maybe next level, so that kind of resolves that that other situation where I run the fatigue for, for Rallying. Deserters are awful because of this. I wouldn't say they're awful, they're just kind of... You really have to focus on patching their Resolve. No Fortified Mind yet? No. Um... Actually, that's a good point. I might have wanted to have taken that first. What do you think about Fortified Mind on, on a Bannerman who doesn't have Rally yet? I mean, is that worth it? I know you want it eventually, but that's something I haven't really decided on. I've always thought that you want to get Rally first so that, um, you know, if things go to shit, you can slam that Rally button. But I, I guess the Fortified Mind would just kind of give you a straight-up buff to everybody's... Um, straight up buff to everybody's resolve so it's it's kind of preventative in that way so i could definitely um i could see fortified first being being the move it's kind of hard to say but i mean i do think that versus geists you really you just need to have this asap you know well i don't take fast adapt on on my super duper end game guys but we're not even there yet like i I, I honestly believe that giving fast adaptation to every single one of your bros is the correct move until you're until you discover, you know, well and truly badass endgame guys. 
Those are arrows, not comparisons. What now? Oh, I see. Student, then fortified mind, then rally. Yeah, I could see that. I don't like taking student first because my early game, and maybe I'm just like a shitter who needs to get good, but my early game I've discovered is like hilariously frustrating for me if I don't take fast adaptation on everybody first. That's a fair point, Einarjarn. I mean, it's not like you're forced to fight geists, although I will say that you, you almost are sometimes because if you take a mission that takes you to an undead place, which again, you could just not take that mission because, uh, you know, there's a chance of being geists there, but if there are geists there, then uh, it's kind of nice to have a shot at doing it. Although I think I agree that you probably shouldn't. Uh, alrighty. Oh, sorry, Waldo, I missed your question there. Yeah, they're giving you really good advice. Um, brawlers, thieves, thieves especially are outrageously good because of their base defense. Brawlers, thieves, poachers, um, probably not poachers actually because they tend to be expensive and melee is more important than ranged. Um, brawler, brawlers, thieves, farmers. Um, basically, if you go to the wiki, you can see the ranges of uh, melee attack, HP, and melee defense, which are your three probably most important um, well, fatigue as well, um, stats that you're going to be interested in. But if you look at my lineup, like, we've got a farmer, we've got, well, don't worry about him because we started with him, but beast slayers are good, they're just expensive. So we got like a farmer, we got a thief, got a farmer, um, this guy's from an event, don't worry about him. Uh, beggars are crap, but we just kind of got him as a meat shield. I wouldn't hire him if I was trying to get good bros. Uh, got another farmer, farmer. Um, here's a monk. You really want to have at least one of these because they have excellent events. Even if you're not using them in combat, you, you do want to have a monk in the reserve somewhere. Um, just His events are just really good. Um, also, they make pretty good bannermen. Uh, resolve. Their base resolve is high. If they have stars in resolve, they make excellent bannermen. Uh, yeah, beast slayers are really good bros for sure. Thank you, Zeldas, for posting that. It's really good stuff. And yeah, you see I have another thief here. Just because you hire a guy with a good background does not mean he's going to be good. He can certainly ro low roll. He can get stars in awkward places or no places at all. Um, actually, by way of example, um, this guy was completely bizarre. He has three range skill, and I'm kind of trying to turn him into a range guy, but I really probably shouldn't be doing that because he started at like 35 range skill. Uh, yeah, I consider 400 to 500 gold expensive at the beginning. Um, you are correct that Hunter is like two to three, three more times, uh, more expensive, but... Hmm. Why get paid once, but we can, if we can get paid twice? Do I care about the... Do I... Do I, do I care at all about my relations up here? I don't think I do. I think I just want money. Time to get paid twice. I still think it doesn't make sense that that reduces uh, that that reduces unrest here. If you see a squire, a poacher for 400 to 500 gold, it's probably worth investing in. Um, so I don't particularly disagree, but I do think I would follow my, my rule of thumb, which is that uh, if you... If you are spending more than 20% of your existing money on on a bro in the in the early game, it's probably you're probably making a bad choice. At least that's that's what I've been kind of kind of sticking with. I just healed his uh, whatever that was the minus damage um, injury, which makes it heal faster. Spent 80 gold seems worth it. Squire is pretty worth sure. Yeah, Squire is a good background. Um. I don't think I'm going to sell this wine. I think I'll just drink it. Bad prices here. Although our inventory is pretty stuffed. Hey, a delivery mission. Yeah, I'll go to Koppeldorf. That's fine. I kind of wanted to explore the north a little more, but no big deal. We've still got Jurstil not, not unfriendly to us, so we can roll up in there. Hopefully not get uh, tagged by soldiers and, and use their taxidermist. Uh, there are a few unique characters that you can that you can get. Um, that's pretty few and far between, though. I can really only think of one event that gives you a bro who I think is 100% hard set. 
and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it because it's a really cool event. Okay. Um, bro, how many weaponsmiths have we looked at and not found a rondel? <laughs> I really, really want a rondel. Famed Speedum, by the way. I didn't even know that famed Speedums existed. I guess that's uh, technically the highest damage spear that exists in the game. Can I recommend the required background you need? Um, what do you? I mean, yeah, sure. It's a it's a really bad famed Speedum. For the hidden bro? Oh, wait, what now? Are we talking about the, uh... Well, I mean, I'll just say that... I mean, I can say the name, but, like, uh, King Kingsguard? Is that what you're talking about? That's the event. We're talking about the same thing, right? I didn't think you needed a particular background to trigger that event, or do you? I thought that was just something that can sort of happen. Regardless of anything. Oh, that guy. Yeah, you need a, you need a monk. You need a monk for him. <laughs> That's true. He is fairly unique. He's not hard set. And in fact, he can be quite bad. But uh he's so he's so cool. I'm going to get overcharged on tools cuz I really need some. I have a ton of repairs to make. I also want to buy this dog, but I'm not going to I'm not going to get overcharged on a dog. That's 570. It's crazy. Uh okay. Um Too bad this is not ambushed. We could make our big pile of money off this stuff, you know? Really would like to use the uh, training school, but we're just kind of broke as usual. But what did I say I was going to do? I said I was going to head south, and I was going to try to get allied to one of the city-states. And the goal of that is to unlock the agent so that I can focus on doing beast missions. Oh uh, yeah, the belly dancer event. It's true. Belly dancer I don't think is unique, though. I think you can actually hire... Um, belly dancers and get them outside of the event. Although I could be... Am I wrong about that? Am I am I thinking of blade blade dancers or whatever? Can you not get a belly dancer elsewhere? I think the belly dancer has good stats if I remember correctly. I am wrong. Okay. Swing swung. I am wrong. Uh, hello. Yeah, don't worry about it, Waldo. I'm totally happy to answer. Thanks for the follow, man. It's guaranteed to have Dextrous. Oh, yeah, that's true. You can get... Um, well, you can get Reformed Crusader during the Holy War event. You can get a regular Crusader during the Undead um, Crisis. And you can get an Orc Slayer during the Orcish uh, Crisis. However, um, while those guys are guaranteed to be level 9 and have pretty good stats, I think, um, they do leave you after the Crisis is over. I don't know if the Reformed Crusader leaves you after the crisis, but I know the other two do, do, and there's really only like one way to make them not leave you, and you have to be the Davkal Origin. And you also have to be very lucky because you have to give them brain damage. Um, supply Caravan, we should probably do this. This is uh, four footmen probably and three billmen, maybe five footmen and two billmen. Either way, it's, uh, you know, it's enough. We can crush them. So, um, we're already, you know, this, this house is already real pissed off at us. They hate me. We're, we're hostile. So there's no particularly good reason for me not to kill this caravan. Yeah. Brain damage, uh, is what allows you to convert backgrounds to being a cultist that you otherwise couldn't convert. And actually, I just lied to you. You don't have to have the Davkal origin to do conversions. You just have to have a cultist in your party. It's, um, it just happens... Um, you get the event less often if you don't have the Dav Davkal origin. I think it's 30 days. There's just 13. Alright. Um, we're actually very close to having this. Professional renown. So I think I might just do this real quick, even though some of these other ones look good. I mean, obviously we want to go to the south and get our 
get that allied status with one of them, but let's just do this, and this will be free renown, more or less. I mean, if you look at my... Oh, what the fuck? Oh, man, I forgot. We, we lost 100 from canceling that contract, so we're actually not that close. Lame. Well, you have to you have to be an idiot, or or you can be lowborn, I guess. So I'm not fighting this thing yet because our tools are being used, right? We have broken armor, so we're just camping out a little bit on this road. These uh, these soldiers are watching me. They know that I'm a bad boy. Magic is real in the Battle Brothers world seems like a pretty convincing reason. Yeah, I mean, hell, I joined the Davkul cult. On the other hand, I guess they, uh, I guess they might sacrifice me, so I'd have to level up really fast to avoid that. <laughs> All right, we got awesome terrain here, really, really good. Yeah, you got to be lowborn, or you, uh, if you're not lowborn, which by the way doesn't mean that you're highborn. You can just be like not lowborn or highborn. So things like messengers are out. Um, so you have to be lowborn, or you can have the dumb trait. Um, and the problem is that certain backgrounds, a lot of backgrounds, in fact, cannot have the dumb trait. So the alternative is having the brain damage uh, permanent injury, which there's no way to guarantee that you get that. The closest thing is you can get the surgeon in the retinue and guarantee that you can get one permanent injury without dying, assuming that you don't get fatalityed. So uh, it's not really something that you can force safely. Davkul represents the only rational response to the world of Battle Brothers. That's that's pretty accurate, man. I have to say, that's a pretty hot take. Alrighty, um, let's wait with Asimov. I kind of want to move this guy up here, just to give him high ground. Because you know they're going to go for this high ground. Um, you'll notice I'm waiting with him, and that's because I actually want him to move at the absolute end of the turn order next time. So that a spear wall gets value out of it, you know. Davkul is not to be trusted, he has saved zero campaigns. Well, I don't know about that, man. Plus, plus 20 HP on your bros is pretty sick, assuming you get to that point. I bet you people have lived from that. That and completely ignoring injuries is just crazy. Um, okay. Let's see if this works out. Pull this guy down. Maybe it'll work. Zero, he is a false god. So you're, you're more of a monk, huh? Servant of the old gods. Hey, me too, Nish. Alrighty. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to keep this guy's spear wall up. I would like to get the other spear wall man up here, where Arvius currently is. And then I would like to stick some kind of reach guy right about there. But considering that Nish is right there, we're going to want it to be him. Uh, so instead... Do I, do I dare trust that Taunt will actually work? Oh man. We're going to find out. <laughs> okay. Um, now this is our boy with the bill hook. We're just going to miss on purpose, basically. And then, uh, you know what? We missed twice. It's fine. We build up to fast adaptation. We'll move up with the billhook and attack next turn. Technically, I could have... You know what? I could have moved up and hit him with the billhook here, but this is better because um, I don't put myself at risk. Okay. Oren's there. Let's... Um, I was going to say let's wait, but we can't. So we'll go up here. Get the high ground. Uh, we'll move Arvius out of the way. Man, this is killer on my AP, going down the down the height there. Um, this is sort of interesting. We could move up with Hildebert and get an axe strike on this dude. Not ideal, because uh, it takes away the spear wall shenanigans that I'd like to do. And I very much could end up in a bad situation with Hildebert. But on the other hand, getting that attack in would be so good if it actually hit. Just really good. <laughs> Um, and we have a lot of guys around who can shove people out of the way. So, I think we are going to do that. 
risky as it seems. Oh, we get the hit. We get exposed ribs. Very nice. Save scum. Yeah, the god of cheating. <laughs> Alright, so I'd like to move Orin here, but that would be pretty crazy because that would make this Billman able to slap my dumb ass around, which I don't want. So, um... I'm just going to shield wall here. Pass turn. Um, pass turn with Iron Word. Spear wall here. I kind of want to move down because you just know that they're they're not going to go into either of these positions. But they might want to go there. There's a guy in the grassland, by the way. I don't think it's a billman. I think it's a footman. I should have been looking more closely. If there's a billman there, then uh, I'm going to be a real unhappy camper, I think. This guy is useless. I like that. I like that he's down here and he's not going to be doing anything to me throughout, throughout this fight. Well, at least not yet. Okay, should we move up and swing? I'm going to say yeah because this guy's not shield walling yet. Nice, got a 32% hit. Okay, that did that guy just pop out of the bushes? Did this Pokemon come from the tall grass? I think he did. I like, blinked and he was just there. <laughs> uh, okay, so in my ideal world, I just gun this Billman down with with uh, bow, bow uh, arrows from my bow, but he's currently blocked off by this dude, and that's a situation that's unlikely to change. So I think instead we just kind of go for this, and maybe... Well, no, he's not hurt enough to kill, is he? Unless we got, like, two headshots, which is very unlikely. Axe in two turns. Um, hmm. Oh, whoa, this Billman's exposed. And that's a 51%. Okay, we finally got some kind of value out of Taunt. So Taunt with Spear Wall might be viable, and that that's actually pretty interesting because it makes me wonder if I can do some kind of wacky, like, Spear Mastery um, plus Taunt build, you know? Spear Mastery and then maybe, like, Shield Mastery as well and just have a super tank line that, that uses Spear Wall. You need, you need to have, like, an insane amount of um, fatigue to make that work, though. And I have to wonder if Duelist would be better you know, to where you're doing somewhat less uh, laughable damage with your spear attacks. So forget the shield and just go pure, it's like, offensive defense, if that makes sense. Spear wall isn't that great is the problem. Well, it's it's mildly less shitty with uh, spear mastery. This is a skill I've never really seen anybody talk about, probably because it's bad, but um, there's there's no accuracy penalty, you know. It's useless in late game fights. Uh, yeah, I I can't. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to be contrarian and disagree just for the sake of it, but I can't find an argument. <laughs> you're you're pretty much right. Um, I was gonna say it could be usable for orcs, but it really can't because they just jump in and stun you. And I think I think that bypasses. Um, I think their leap bypasses spear wall entirely, which is kind of lame if you think about it. They should get straight up impaled on your spear if they try that bullshit. <laughs> Snowflake points are high. I see. Okay. This guy is shield walling. This guy is not. So more chance to hit. We go for it. Doesn't work. Um, I think this is a good time to sort of back off from this spot here. Okay. Now, sadly, we've acted before the footman. Do I want to bother to spear wall? I think I don't. Because if I spear wall again... I mean, this guy is just going to go up here. Actually, he can't, because there's a spear wall in the way. Okay. Okay, my, uh... My fear is rising of this Billman. He's, uh, he's, he's certainly in the mix now. Also, Hildebert is not in the greatest position for, for safety. Um, he could get swung on by this military pick twice and have a real issue. Um, I could start breaking shields. I don't want to bother to break shields. If I had Axe Mastery, I might consider it, but 
as it stands, I think I'm just gonna go for the low chance to hit and eventually get hits via fast adaptation. 19% chance to hit with the puncture. I can see something in the bush. Nuh-uh. The seventh is the donkey. <laughs> and in fact, there is a... Um, I don't know if this is a bug or what, but there's a couple of weird things about bushes in this game that I've discovered. If there's an enemy inside of it, and I click here, then uh, it won't let me do that. And uh, that's that's just kind of like an information, you know, exposure thing that's happening. But the more annoying bug, and this has to do with blazing deserts, is if you try to firebomb on top of this tile, it actually will not let you throw a firebomb onto the bush if somebody's inside of it. And you can't see them. Which is uh, actually super obnoxious because... Uh, <laughs> How fun would it be to burn them out of the bush, you know? You'd think the firebomb would just straight up to delete the uh, delete the bush off of the um, off of the battlefield, you know? Okay, we got one puncture, and we reduced his um, his morale, and we gave him pierced arm muscles. Puncture is good. Um, let's move forward. Let's bust out the old bill hook. And we're looking at a 58% chance to hit. And we get it. This guy's injured as hell. Imagine forest fights of fire spread. Oh my god, that sounds really cool. When can we add this to the game? Alright, so the AI straight up shield walled and then... <laughs> just stood there because it was it has nowhere to go really. Um, it couldn't go up because it would get spear walled. It... It couldn't go down because it would get spear walled, so he, he is waiting. So I guess he's waiting for this thing to stop spear walling. Um, we're going to move forward. And what I'm kind of tempted to do is shove this guy. On the other hand, I, I kind of want to keep him here. I don't want to do damage to him because we've already managed to get a puncture, you know? Um... So this is sort of, this is sort of awkward because, like, if I hit him, I'm just going to hit his armor. And I don't, like, one, I want the armor, but more, more importantly, I I don't want to waste my, my fatigue, really. Bashing him would get rid of his wall. It would, but it would also, um, first of all, his turn's already done, so that wall's going away. And second of all, um, it would send him away from Orin, who is um, really the only guy that wants to be stabbing him. So I wonder if maybe I should just spend my AP whipping out my dagger, which is a little bit early. Um, I mean, in my ideal world, I'm up against this guy. So you know what I think I'm going to do instead? I'm going to wait. Okay, Bill Hook man running into the tall grass. I saw that. Okay, there's a kill. Um, this Bill Hook could just murderize any of my dudes. Unfortunately, 50% of its damage gets through, so uh, nothing I can do to stop that from happening, really. Alright, so here's what I'm doing. I'm going to let this spear wall not happen. We are going to wait, and hopefully this guy moves up. This guy's already spear walling, so he can't change it. Um, oh my god, two bill hooks. Uh, this is horrifying. I almost want to move Iron Word down. Uh, just, just to mess with the morale here. <laughs> but if I do that, then this guy's going to come down for sure. So I guess we're just going to have Iron Word continue to be useless up here. Shield wall. Okay, uh... That was dumb of me not to anticipate that. Of course he went for the high ground. Um... Hmm. Okay, we're going to break out the dagger. It's fine. That's fine. Uh, as for meat shield here, is a 24% chance to hit, 29% chance to hit with the shield push. So we'll do that. Move like this, and now we have a nice little duel going on here with me on the high ground. Okay, let's see if we can't kill ourselves some bill hook men, because uh, if we don't do that, we're in for a real unpleasant situation. Take a step back. Uh, crap. Can't really do anything with Dear Abby here, can I? Axe at 11 turns, Axe on 7 turns. We could repel and take away the... 
take away take away the shield wall, but he's acting before my boy here. Does this um Oh it staggers, okay. Alright, good. So now he acts later. That was worth it. Come on. Oh no, it didn't it didn't make him flee. He is breaking now though, so super low chance to hit. Couple arrows sticking out of him. Um, I do not get to run up and attack. I wonder if... Man, it's too bad I can't see what's happening to this guy's morale. Does anybody need rallied? Looks like looks like everybody's at least steady. I guess we'll just wait. Okay, um... Now, if I could see this goddamn guy... Who, by the way, um... We totally saw him go in there. You'd think I would be able to see him. <laughs> Wait, it says seen at a distance. If I if I put a dude here, could I see him? Because technically I'm like 2.5 tiles away from the high ground here. I think I have to be right next to him to reveal him. Which is uh, sort of super lame. Pretty sure it's adjacent. Yeah, I think so too. He's doing something private. Leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, he's privately waiting to murder uh, Iron Word here. It looks like he's unkillable with his fat armor, but... Uh, I don't trust it, man. Actually, I'm more worried for Asimov because he has 53 HP. Let's just wait. Um, I'm going to take the risk with Bobby Snobby, I think. Step forward. Swing. Miss, but it's actually not much of a risk because I can back up again. Oh, no! It begins. So, so much for breaking. Uh, Asimov just gets totally cucked. I do wish I knew what the turn order was. Oh, wait. Whoa, that's hilarious. I can see him in the bottom row, but I can't see him on the screen. So we know we actually do know when he's acting, and he's going to swing, and he's just going to kill Asimov. Let's check Asimov's... Um, let's see what the chance to hit him was. I am really curious with the breaking and whatnot. It had to have been super low. Yep, 27% chance, and he rolled 27. What is his defense? Not that it really matters for me to know this. I am curious... It's 27, so, well, we'll see. Anyway, uh, this guy acts in eight turns. Let's go ahead and try to stab him. Got him. Yep, I knew he was going to die. I knew it. Uh, killed, not struck down. That actually sucks terribly. That was our... That was our deserter. I mean, it doesn't suck that terribly because his uh, resolve was not going to be very fixable, but at the same time, he, he was quite nice in all of his other stats, so I do feel bad about losing him. And of course, this is just what happens when you're up against two um, two pole hammers. You know, they, they just straight up punch through armor. They have they have a big enough range of damage uh, that the 50% the 50% armor penetration just means that you're going to lose your guys um, unless you have nimble or really, 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 really high hit points. Iron Word probably would have survived due to his 82, but that guy only had like 53, which is just not enough. Uh, he deserted the mortal plane. He sure did. So we're just going to roll up in here. I am mildly annoyed that the 27% chance to hit... Yeah, these were both sub-50s and they both hit. One was significantly sub-50. Wait, what? Yeah, 23. Okay. Yeah, you have to roll below the number. So, um, kind of unfortunate, but what are you going to do? Uh, okay. Got the kill there. We are probably getting armor out of this fight, and maybe even a few pieces, so... I mean, there is that. Okay, I'd like to move up and swing on this billman. <laughs> uh, I don't think I should, though. Okay, let's just uh, try to shove him and fail. Okay, uh, I'm going to go full Berserker against these Billmen. Just like really wild and crazy dangerous strats. And we succeed in killing them. Uh, well, in that case, it's time to be really greedy. Because these footmen are pretty much jokes at this point. So I don't, I don't fear them. Uh, I, I want their armor. Yeah, finally I get to be the axe murderer instead of uh, instead of them. Isn't that nice? 
But yeah, we have a lot of ability to control the battlefield now. So we can take our sweet time, basically. And get some armor. Uh, let's stick Arvius right here. Okay, it says three enemies. One of those is the donkey. Too bad my fatigue is so high. Take out the old dagger. Meat shield has a dagger as well, so let's do that. I don't want to send dudes without shields next to this guy, probably. Unless his morale starts to fail. Do you have a knife? Yeah, you do. Although that messes with the morale of my allies, I suppose. Mm. Okay. Could break some shields. Don't think that would happen fast enough to be worth it, though. Yeah, but their morale isn't really close to breaking, so I don't want to send guys next. 5% chance. 14. I used a stab first to try to build up fast adaptation. Good god. These chances to hit. It's the problem with puncture versus guys with shields. It's very slow. Alright, pass turn. Hey, the hits are coming in. See, they're not they're not totally helpless. They can do some work on me. I'm gonna bring these guys in, I guess. It's a little risky. But it's gonna reduce their defenses. There we go. His morale went down as well. Come on. They're also fresh as far as um fatigue goes. Which is kinda huge. I get real punctures again, and lots of them. Nice, his morale went down. Um, unfortunately, no, and that's a huge, um, huge mistake on my part, really, is uh, the fact that I didn't pick up any nets. I've been really nowhere near a port any time recently, or else I would definitely have some. But yeah, I agree, nets would be pretty good here to keep the ones that are fleeing, especially from running away. Uh, or to reduce their melee defense. Okay, we got a pole hammer, we got three very nice sets of armor, and we got a very nice helmet. A couple of okay helmets, actually. I mean, it was worth it. Uh, it was it was worth this guy dying. Um, I did lose his armor. We may be we may have looted that actually. Yeah, I think this hauberk is that what he was wearing? No, I don't think he had a hauberk on. I think he had. I think he had like a male shirt on him and just broke. Oh man. You'd think the game would be kind enough to give me my armor back, but I, I bet you the bill hook with its massive, you know, it has 185% effectiveness against armor. I bet it was just destroyed in one shot. I mean, forget the armor penetration. It doesn't even really need it because it just, it just crushes armor so fast. Although it's good versus orcs. Bobby Snobby takes the melee defense, melee attack. His uh, resolve is already where I want it to be. I'm going to keep giving him fatigue because, again, we want him to be a sword lance guy eventually. Why Asimov? What are you talking about? Oh, was that was that the was that what I had named him? <laughs> yeah. Well, he he died because he got. Double hammered by Billman. 2x Billman Supreme. You know, what are you gonna do? I don't know if there was really any avoiding that. I mean, I could have tried taunting one of them again, and maybe it would have worked, but... Uh, anyway, our boy here has his polearm mastery. We know what kind of guy he wants to be. The only question is how do we want to build him? So he throws the javelin, he swaps to the bill hook, and then he swings. Pretty good stuff. Um, let's see. I could give him reach advantage. I kind of hate this ability because uh, unless you're attacking more than one guy, it's basically just, okay, I get five 
I get five defense, which is, you know, not terrible, but it's not really worth a perk in my opinion. Um, I do think this is great if you are attacking multiple things somehow with a two-handed weapon, so like with a great sword or a hammer perhaps. Underdog I think is really, really good, although Bobby really probably shouldn't need it. Um, backstab or Brawny if he's going to be Battleforged. That's a great question. Is he going to be Battleforged? See, the thing is, I wanted to make him nimble, um, mainly because uh, as, a, as a Sword Lance guy, I really don't want to impact his fatigue, because that ability, the, the Reap or whatever, I forget exactly how much fatigue it takes, but it's, it's a whole hell of a lot. Um, so for him to be able to do that every single turn, and, and especially since I wanted to give him Berserk as well, so I, I think I kind of wanted to make him a nimble guy just so I could have as light of armor on him as possible and still have him not be completely uh, suicidally weak. Um, why can't you choose the quality of the stream? You should be able to. Um, I've been an affiliate long enough that I know some people can choose quality of stream. That may be on your end. This fatigue will be good enough to have heavy armor, though. I think I think in the general case I'd agree, but... Um, let me, let me look up the Sword Lance real quick and make sure I'm not just having an aneurysm here. So if I look up Sword Lance and I look at how much fatigue it costs to do a reap. Yeah, it's like huge. It's 30. Um, granted, that would be reduced a little bit by 25% actually because of uh, polearm mastery. But uh, I mean, 30, is, 30 base is a ton of fatigue cost. Um, do that twice in one turn. I mean, if we... Well, this, he has pretty light armor on right now. Um, let's say I put on heavy armor, and let's just see what his fatigue becomes. Well, I guess that's not that bad. 80. But still, that's only like... That's like three reaps, you know, before he starts getting super tired. And then he's huff-huffing it, you know? I do agree it's really good fatigue in general for, for battle forged. Um, yeah, hard to say, though. As far as backstab goes, I don't, um... Honestly, it's crazy to me how much better fast adaptation is than backstabber. You know, you go from 5 to 10% per dude, whereas I'm getting like 10% every time I miss here. Um, granted, yeah, this is a a applicable all the time, and this one isn't. Uh, gifted is an option, and I think it might be the best one. Yeah, I think gifted. You know, when you're not sure what to take, you just take gifted. You don't want to miss to begin with. Fair point. Fair point. But in this game, you can't. <laughs> you know, you can't. You have to assume that's going to happen. Um, hmm. Interesting. We really have dedicated him to being a sword lance guy. Otherwise, I would just take underdog and turn him into two hander. But we already gave him polearm mastery, so. I think I very well might just take... I mean, we could take Rotation. He will have 86 melee attack without Gifted. That's pretty high. Of course you should stay with Malcolm Rose Gaming, bro. This is, uh... <laughs> should always stay with Malcolm Rose Gaming. He's the best. Um, man, his, his melee defense is... It's okay. Uh, it's not great, but it's okay. I feel like having Rotate is going to potentially save some bros in the future. Um, sending him from backline to frontline might be kind of nice at some point. Gifted will make his defense better. That's true. That's true. Um, I'm, I, I think I'm pretty much strongly in agreement that we do eventually want to take Gifted on this guy. I just don't know if it's right now. I think the most, you know, just raw, raw value that we would get right now out of anything would believe it or not, I think would be Executioner. You know, imagine Executioner plus Huge plus Drunkard with just like a bill hook. The the sheer amount of damage from that, you know, is crazy. And we are causing a lot of injuries. Um, I think I do just take Gifted right now, though. I think I'm going to have to default to that just for the straight, straight up value of it. Um, oh, man. 24 more fatigue with gifted means 4 reaps, yeah. 
All right, you sold me. Boom, boom, boom. Wait, 24 more fatigue with gifted. You mean you mean four more? Um, but I mean, I shouldn't really. I probably shouldn't be planning quite so hard for sword uh, sword lance, considering we we don't have one yet. Although we will eventually get one. I could probably buy one right now, actually, if I sold all my stuff. Okay, what do we got here? Orin is our dagger boy. Uh, he really wants to have fatigue. So we're going to give it to him. Yep. As far as perks go, we're at a kind of interesting impasse with him because uh, he probably wants to take overwhelm at some point, although his I haven't been leveling, leveling his initiative I think instead, because he finds himself jumping up into the fray so often, uh, he very certainly takes underdog. That will do so much to keep him alive, it's not even funny. Like, he will... I, this is going to save his ass, I, I promise. Um, and that's kind of the quintessential problem with your dagger bros, is you tend to put them, if you're me anyway, you tend to put them in really dumb spots, uh, really dangerous spots. Anybody good to hire, perhaps? There's a farmer. <laughs> hey, bros, it's a, it's a sell sword. He sells his sword. Messenger? Do we like messengers? I haven't really... I understand they have good fatigue, from what I've heard. Let me look at the, let me look at the spreadsheet here. 50 to 60 HP... 47 to 57 melee attack, that's the same as all the others. Um, wow, 0 to 7... 0 to 7 defense, that's not bad. If you look at a farmhand instead... Yeah, they have... wow. Yeah, okay, so farmhands beat them on HP, but they lose on defense. 100 to 120 fatigue, and for a messenger it's... 105 to 110... Yeah, it's competitive. It's competitive, and as you say, the um, the cost is not that bad. I think I'm going to have to add messengers to my must-hire list. Okay, I'm sold. Who would like to be the messenger? He's kind of a throwaway bro. HP, range attack, resolve, yeah, he's not good. But he's he's usable. There it is. Uh, Enish, I believe, is dead. Anyway, we have a lot of very nice armor now, so any amount of complaining that I've done can be thrown out the window because we have 150, we have 130 and 150 armors now. Really quite nice. Very good, baby. Oh wait, did I roll 7 on defense? Hold up. Oh shit! I lied. We max rolled. Yeah, okay, he's good. I mean, he's not, like, endgame good, because he doesn't have stars, but... In theory... I mean, who knows? We could max roll on melee skill and melee defense for 10 levels and proceed to turn this guy into a... sort of a combat god. It's not impossible. Alright, he'll pick up the old spear. 60 HP with stars. That's true. I think he... Is that a max roll for Messenger? Oh my god, that is a max roll for Messenger with HP. Alright, he's, he's acceptable. Acceptably good. Notice I'm putting my best helmets and armors and stuff on the sides here still. Who's that guy who followed me because I because I said the bear headpiece looked good? It's uh, it really does look cool, doesn't it? I remember when I first saw this, I my eyes tricked me, and for some reason I thought this was a pair of shades, you know, just the shadow there beneath the teeth. I was like, why are the barbarians wearing sunglasses? <laughs> Where did they get those? But uh, no, no, definitely not. But seriously, look look at like look at it down here, the low res sort of 
tiny, uh, tiny shot. Doesn't that look like he has sunglasses on, kinda? If you look at it right. I do have a Melkoif, thank you for reminding me. Very good. Um, would anybody like to be the meat shield? He's getting to be high enough leveled that I, I get the feeling we're not going to get rid of him anytime soon, so... First person who calls it. Emery AU. There you go. I assume that you're from Australia. How's it, how's it going down there? And have you ever tried emu meat? It's the uh, first thing I always ask Australian people. Because they look like a giant, you know, walking steak on two legs, basically. Emu meat is strange. Yeah, what does it taste like? I haven't tried it yet, but I, I definitely want to. Who wants to be Hildebert the Drunk? Are we gamey? Yeah, it's not too surprising. It's a very wild animal, I suppose. Uh, anybody else want a name? Let's name him Max Man for now. Oh, we got one. Okay. Sorry, Zeldust, you, uh... You were one, one moment too late. We'll get the next guy, though. I think everybody has a name now. Kangaroo meat. Yeah, the most exotic thing I've had, I think, is uh, crocodile meat, which was really quite good. Kind of a cross between pork and uh, chicken, if I remember correctly. Blame the net delay. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's get some repairs going on the tier two weapons, because that is valuable. Um, pair of this pole hammer. We are swimming in pole hammers. We have we have two now. Um, it's too bad we didn't get the other one so that we could have three. But I mean, it's it's kind of weird that I'm not that I don't have those equipped since they just walk right through armor. But we'll probably throw these on versus certain things. Um, in fact, I mean, if I fight anything that has armor, we're going to be using pole hammer instead of pike. Because, I mean, it just it just flies right through, insta killing things. Um, and dear Abby is not is not going to be a pole arm guy in the long term, so it's not like I'm going to take pole arm mastery. In fact, I, I tell you, if 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 this counted as a pole arm, I would probably be using it instead of the bill hook on our pole arm mastery guy, even though the damage is reduced. This resolution of streaming might be somehow exclusive to this channel. Um. I can take a look at my settings again. I, I have no idea if, if that's the case or not. 50 to 75, 55 to 75. Oh man, 10% um, chance to hit though. Yeah, sadly we don't get a bonus chance to hit on uh, on the pole hammer. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take a look, Enish. Was, was the other guy, tell me something, was the other guy a partner? Or no, because the last time I checked, that was like semi-limited to, to partners. But I've had people tell me that they can change um, quality on their um, on their stream. I see right now from my end, if I come in as a viewer and I look... Hey, thank you for the follow, Emery AU. On my end, it tells me that I can only do 180p. Um, but there was once upon a time, I, I, I'm positive that I saw that I was able to change it. So, yeah, right, what Oren said, so... I, I don't, I don't know. Um, Arvius is, uh, I mean, the dude just raided me with like 450 people the other day, so I guarantee you he, uh, he's almost definitely a partner. Um, so I'm willing to bet that like, I bet you it's something like if you're not a partner, then you only get that feature when it's like not, uh, gonna mess with, uh, Twitch's performance, you know, like if they have low load at the time, low performance load, not very many people on Twitch at the time then they might open it up to affiliates and otherwise not. Uh, Alright. Let's walk down to Koppeldorf. Finish out this quest. It's too bad that there's no... Um, it's too bad that there's not like a settlement situation ambush over there because we really need to offload all of our stuff. Um, in fact, my inventory is so full that I, I might just kind of have to do that. So what we'll probably do is we'll probably finish this mission and then head uh, immediately head south to the um, to the desert city. I see there's a uh, supply caravan here with just footmen, so no billmen to ruin my day. 
Oh man, we probably want to do this. I don't really, uh, I don't really think I have another fight in me for for the night though. I'm actually pretty hungry, so I think I'm gonna probably call it, call it for the stream for now. Um, and then next time, the first thing we'll do is sort of stock this caravan until we're repaired up, and uh, take it down, and then we'll finish out our mission, and then we'll go down way south to the desert city. Uh, maybe to the other desert city for the arena and sell all this stuff. But yeah, um, this was a really good stream. I had a whole lot of fun. Really enjoying some of the new faces, you know, in the in the stream audience. So it's nice to see you guys, especially the new followers. I appreciate that. Uh, but it is going to be that is going to be it for the night. Here in a minute, I will probably send a raid at Arvius, kind of a smaller than smaller one than the one that he sent at me. But I will, uh, you know, try to return the favor anyway. So stick around for that. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Until next time, I am signing out. Did you know that there are many ways that you can help support this channel? Read about them on rosecrypto.com support. At Rose Crypto, you can learn all about cool things like the Brave web browser, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.